Hey, Happy New Year. Welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, we're going to look back at 2019. We're going to take a look at some of my favorites and some of my least favorite comics. We're going to talk about why I liked them, why I didn't like some of them, and where I hope we're going for comics in 2020, because the one place we want to keep moving with comics is forward. Hey, welcome back. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today on Comic Book News, we're going to look back at 2019. We're going to take a look at some different categories, some of my favorite comics, some of my favorite uh, ongoing series, some of my favorite miniseries, uh, some of my least favorite of those same two categories, and also uh, collections and original graphic novels. Talk about some of the changes that I've been seeing over the last year as I've... Uh, dive back deeper into comics uh, for the first time in a few years since becoming a dad and uh, moving out of the big city. So, uh, hey, without further ado, let's go straight into the best and worst of 2019, where else but in the Million Dollar Comics camp. Okay, here we are. It's the best and worst of 2019. I broke this down into a few categories and... Uh, prepared uh, a little bit of material for you here so let's take a look shall we our first category is best ongoing series uh this is where i talk about comics that like are continuing sagas um and and there's still a lot of them they're still kind of the best sellers of the industries are still the big ongoing monthly comics those don't always translate into great collected volumes but what they do translate into is uh, butts in seats. I, I, and by that, I mean people coming into the comic book store every Wednesday excited about getting the latest issue of their favorite comics. There is no substitute for that kind of excitement in this industry. So that's why I've gone full circle from a comic guy to a, a trade paperback and graphic novel guy. And now I'm all the way back into single issue comics. Um, and I love all types of formats of comics and the whole spectrum that the industry has to offer. Okay, Batman. This one's controversial, right? But I had to bring it in. Love him or hate him, Tom King's been writing the last 85 issues of Batman. Now, it was originally supposed to be 100, 105, something like that. And his reign got cut short. And I will admit it got very choppy in there. I, I haven't been reading since the beginning of King's Run. But I've read uh, the past year plus of it. And, uh, and I've been intrigued. King's a good writer. Um, he's got some of the great artists, it's tons and tons of great uh, creative types and artists around him to create great comics. And he's succeeded sometimes and he's failed at others, right? But he's trying and he's doing different things, not just with the, 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 the format of the stories, but with the character of Batman himself, bringing a lot more emotion and, uh, you know, sort of like personal inner turmoil into the character. Like or hate his relationship with Catwoman uh that's where Tom King's going next he's leaving Batman he's going to explore that in Batman and Catwoman uh I like Batman enough and I like what Tom King was trying to do enough to include it as a nominee for best ongoing series next one Usagi Yojimbo holy cow what this one's been going on for uh, is it 35 years now amazing auteur comic and it's great to point these two things out here, right? Like these are two characters that were created and have survived the test of time decades and decades. One under the guiding uh, uh, artistic leadership of a single vision, Stan Sakai for Usagi Ojimbo. Batman has been through dozens and dozens of different creative hands and editorial hands and even executive interference. That doesn't mean you can't tell great Batman stories. You totally can, and there have been a lot of them. And I talk about them on this show, and I love them, right? Batman forever. Uh, but there is something about an auteur comic, something about a, the, the singular vision or, or a, a core vision of one or a couple of people that really excites me about comics. So that's why I had to bring Usagi Ujimbo back in, especially because after 35 years, to relaunch as an ongoing series in full color is really exciting and it's something different and something new and shows that an old dog 
like Usagi has new tricks to pull out and show for uh, the next generation. And I, and I predict there will be a recolorization of uh, a lot of the previous years of Usagi. Mark my words. Hawkman. Wow, what? Hawkman? Who's reading Hawkman? You know, I never even reviewed Hawkman, and this was one of my favorite ongoing series uh, in DC in 2019. This had spectacular art by my one of my all-time favorite artists, Brian Hitch, and it is written by uh, a guy named Robert Venditti, who's written a lot of DC comics, but got his start writing a comic called The Surrogates that got adapted and uh, into a movie with Bruce Willis. wasn't a great movie. But when he was doing that, he was working as a distributor. He was working at a, a local independent comics distributor at the time called Cold Cut when I was running a store. It was in Salinas. I was in San Jose. I would call and talk to Robert a lot and, and place orders and chat about comics a little bit. And even after he made his big hit, he's kept working there and working in uh, at that place until you know he secured better writing, full-time writing jobs. But he never let that movie's success get to his head. He was very humble. His writing shows a deep love of comics and a great knowledge of story and storytelling. There were some awesome moments in this Hawkman series. It's available in trade paperbacks. I really recommend you check it out, the first 12 issues. Now, after Hitch left, I'll admit, I didn't last long with the with the, the, the new artists that came in because Brian Hitch set such a bar um, that it, it was really tough for me. But I love the first 12 uh, and, and I like a lot of what Ben Diddy writes, so um, I recommend checking these out. What this also proved is that Brian Hitch, um, who's known as a great artist, an artist artist, created the Ultimates, and you know led to many of the designs of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What it proved was that he didn't have to be late. He had been plagued in his career by lateness. Like on the Ultimates, each issue got successively like later and later, almost like a, like a logarithmic scale of lateness. Um, what he proved with Hawkman is that he could deliver 12 monthly issues of a standard comic on time and looking fantastic. There was great stuff in here. The Hawkman, uh, Adam team up reuniting in the microverse had some really cool moments. And, uh, so if you like that kind of stuff, you like Hawkman or you like just great art and solid storytelling and, and, and a fun kind of new spin on Hawkman's origin yet again. Yes. But like many of my favorite reboots and redos or whatever you want to call them, uh, it, it, it takes into account all the previous stuff too. It doesn't just discount it and say all that other stuff didn't happen. In fact, it all happened and it's all part of the, 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 the continuingly complex saga of Hawkman. Next, Criminal. Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. They relaunched with their new number one again this year and just came out of the gate again swinging with killer comics this is just the best probably comic of the month that i read on an ongoing basis it's consistently the highest quality every issue has not just not just solid good storytelling fantastic moments great characterization the best characters in comics and some of the best art put together in a beautiful package the single issues are like wonderful to hold in your hand uh, with some backup materials they talk about a lot of like crime and pulp movies and they try to give you backup material that make it worth reading the individual comics if you like crime crime movies crime comics and criminals you want to read criminal okay there's just no doubt about it it's one of the best but which one of these four is the best well the bestie goes to I, it had to be to me, Usagi Yojimbo. This was this was tough. I knew it probably wasn't going to be Batman. Um, and and honestly, it was going to be one of the two auteur books. Not one. Not it probably wasn't going to be Hawkman or Batman. Just because the best comics in my mind come from Singular Visions, and there's no more Singular Vision news than Stan Sakai and Usagi. I mean, talk about going completely outside of the box of American genres popular American genres and comics and just knocking it so far out of the park as an international hit beloved by all he pulled off the amazing trick of a comic that you get parents and teachers and librarians highly recommending for young children like even elementary school age children and it's full of brutal stabbings 
Like Usagi cuts off a lot of things off a lot of bad people, right? But it's the power of comics and, and the fact that it's historical drama and uh, distilling down history and mythology of Japan and storytelling and movies and so many other things that Stan Sakai loves and digests and pulls into his comics that Usagi is the best. It deserves best ongoing series just for the color reboot. Check it out. New Colors by Tom Luth. Worth reading. Worth revisiting the old stuff. Next, let's go straight to worst. The worsties. Ongoing, worst ongoing series. I'm not going to belabor these too much. Amazing Spider-Man. I started reading this early when it first relaunched by what is it, Spencer and Otley. This is horrible. It's bad writing. I like Ryan Otley from his work on Invincible. He can draw really fun looking comics, but it doesn't make up for just the subpar writing and the stupid kind of sitcom antics they're trying to in they tried to infuse into spider-man and he's roommates with boomerang now and and things that just instantly turned me like 180 degrees away from it i was coming with a fresh shot to give spidey a chance because um, i was a spidey fan as a kid and for many years and this sorry okay oh this one hurt to put on this list green lantern is it ongoing? It's on a hiatus now for this Black Stars, Dark Stars thing that they got going on. Man, I was so excited. Grant Morrison was going to come to Green Lantern. They were going to take this Green Lantern mythology that's been developed with all the multicolored rings and stuff. That's gone about as far as it can go. I know a lot of people really love that stuff. Um, I never got sold on it as a huge fan of it, so... I was excited to see someone with an imagination like Grant Morrison and a love for Silver Age comics um, and modern stuff to bring a fresh new take to Green Lantern that would excite me. Liam Sharp, if you like his style, you like it. If you don't, you don't. He's a great artist. He's great for this kind of sci-fi stuff. It's, it's a little bit of a throwback looking book. It was meant to be. It's meant to be sort of an older style of storytelling comics. Unfortunately, it never worked for me. I know I've, there's people out there that love it. I love, the Liam Sharp artwork sure is fun to look at. The, the storytelling to me is um, horrible. It's almost indecipherable. Okay, call me dummy. I'm too dumb for Grant Morrison. That's probably what it is, right? It's not just that this is an indecipherable mess. Defend it if you want to in, in the comments, and I'll talk about it. And I, and I don't begrudge you if you love it or like it or whatever. Give me some reasons because... I had a hard time. One, it feels completely outside of continuity, like it should have been, um, like one of those black label books or something. Totally outside. This is not the ongoing Green Lantern. I, I could just feel anybody who was a Green Lantern fan before this book just kind of fleeing away from it. And Grant Morrison fans are going to come in, but there's only so many of those left now. I think. And, they're, and, and and I'm one of them. And I'm reading this thing and I'm going, this is not it. He tried to be space cops and they tried to make this like The Wire or like, he, and, and Hal Jordan's the McNulty, if that means anything to you. It didn't work. Top 10 already did. Cop superheroes way, way better than this you can even attempt to. So if you like police procedurals or whatever mixed with your superheroes go check out top 10 by Alan Moore and um come back to me when Green Lantern gets good again okay next Superman oh ouch you know Bendis I've been a fan I stuck with him I've been with him on board from the relaunch from the very beginning was not a didn't really know what was going on with Superman before but I'm like okay I'm gonna give Bendis a shot I really enjoyed and still kind of do enjoy action comics and what he had going on in there with um, with the, the Invisible Mafia and sort of the villains he was building up. He was doing a real good job, in my mind, of building up um, how the true like Superman villain menace would work. It's, it's not going to be somebody who can confront him head on. It's going to be those that understand what Superman is and can hide and disguise and distract from Superman uh, that they're going to get stuff crime done. And I like that. Unfortunately in Superman, all this stuff with John, with Jonathan Kent, the son who I didn't like to begin with, 
but sending him into the future and then bringing him back aged up and doing all the things that they did just to contrive and get him into the 30th century. I'm glad it got Superman away from that. It felt just like a big setup for a not great comic, if you've read my Legion review. Um, Superman itself, now he has revealed his secret identity in the last issue. We haven't seen the ramifications yet. My review, a lot of people have watched it. Check it out if you want. Um, I just see a lot of it. It doesn't make sense at all why he would do this. Like, he never even thought about any potential downsides when he said, I'm going to reveal my secret identity. Like, oh, it could put people I love in danger, people I work with. Ne that didn't even occur to him or anybody that he asked. And he didn't ask anybody of importance, really. Like, he didn't talk to him. I would think he, you got access to a guy like Batman, you might want to bounce an idea like this off of him. Just saying. Finally, oh, Fallen Angels. I, I, I've been enjoying the X-Men. I've been reviewing the X-Men, but I could not get past issue two of Fallen Angels. Apparently, it's already been canceled. It was supposed to be an ongoing series, but we all knew it wasn't going to last. I, I thought it might last longer than whatever it's lasting, five or six issues, but ugly art, so-so storytelling, characters I don't care about, and just sort of an angle on this bad girl, bad boy angle that's never been my thing. This book was not meant for me to begin with. So, uh, you know, is it any surprise that my worst ongoing series was Fallen Angels? It's kind of a cop out. Those other things, series were not great. This one, though, was by far the worst thing that I just couldn't even, I didn't even bother. I didn't want it to be ongoing. Those other ones, I want to still see what happens to Superman and, and Green Lantern and whatever in the future. I don't care about this at all. Sorry. Next category, best limited series. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of limited series these days. Uh, you know, some, some would argue that even ongoing series are nothing but just like a series of limited series meant to be collected. Here's some of the limited series I liked and bought. Silver Surfer Black. I, you know what? I don't care about the Venom, Spawn, God, whatever this story was about. I was all in it for the Trad Moore art uh it, it's really trippy it looks like nothing else it looks like no other version of silver surfer for good or for ill it was fun and readable at the same time didn't make a huge ton of sense to me and obviously it's tying into some future cosmic stuff and it's tying back into other books like guardians of the galaxy and stuff i don't really care about but this was cool looking i, I liked it and um it, it's on my list Next, ooh, House of X and Powers of X. These are inextricably tied together. These were uh, sold incredibly well, were incredibly well received by reviewers. I got humongous amounts of views uh, on YouTube when I reviewed this stuff. And I, it, to me, it brought back a renaissance of the X-Men. Now, I've cooled a little bit on it since then. It's not been... Like I said, Fallen Angels, I'm already out. And some of the other books are just losing. Nothing has really grabbed me and I'm loving it. Um, but it had to be on my list uh, of nominees. Finally, oh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, A Blazing Worlds. The final uh, comics issues of Alan Moore tying together the sort of fictoverse that he's created in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Man, I love me some League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I didn't review these issues um, on the show because I was waiting for them to all come out and read them all sort of in one. It's a little bit of a cheat, but to me, this stuff reads much better um, collected than, than necessarily as individual issues. Although I will say each of these issues was like a different period of comics and a different type of comics parody on the inside. If you really love, especially British comics, this was really for you. I'm not as big a fan of this stuff as I am the earlier League of Extraordinary Gentlemen stuff, but it had to be on my list as the final work of the greatest writer in comics. I'm just going to say undisputed best writer in comics ever, Alan Moore. Uh, certainly my favorite, okay? Um, it had to be on the list. Uh, is it the winner? Well, he's the best, right? So it should be the winner, right? No. The winner was probably the one, the comic of these three that I nominated here. I, this one probably is not, it's probably the worst art. You know, you can't compare to Kevin O'Neill and Trad Moore. Those guys are auteurs that do things in a way no one else can. This was a various art teams that were, that are good. Good superhero stuff. Interesting. It was fun. It was the idea that, that 
the conversion of Moira McTaggart, spoiler alert, into a mutant who has lived many past lives was such a mind trip. And all the multiple timelines and how they may or may not tie together was such a great concept and great way to launch this House of X stuff that it brought everybody in. It had fans speculating. It had me thinking and drawing timelines and making videos and doing all kinds of things and being excited about X-Men. That's a big thing. That's really important. We need people excited about comics that are coming out on a regular basis and getting people into comic book stores. And nothing did that in 2019 more than House of X, Powers of X by Brian Hickman. That's why it was the best limited series uh, of 2019 to me. How about the worst? What was the worst, man? Oh, this are, there were so many that could have been in this category. It was tough for me to narrow it down. So let's just... So many, everything's a limited series, right? And so many are so bad. A lot of them weren't finished yet, so I, I didn't want to include it unless the series had finished in 2019, even if it didn't necessarily start in 2019, like some of these. For instance, Doomsday Clock, we've been waiting years for this thing. Man, we take arguably the greatest superhero comic ever, uh, uh, The Watchmen, as far as literature, literate comics go. And let's jam it into the DC Universe because we want Superman comics to be as respected as the Watchmen, so that we can grab that cachet. Even though the artist, the right, even though the writer Alan Moore wants nothing to do with it and really loves this work and, and wants nobody to keep exploiting it, they are milking and milking and milking a million Watchmen babies. That's why Doomsday Clock had to be on this list. Killer art by Gary Frank. Naval gazing, overly wrought, written story by Jeff Johns. It's it's one, and then taken years to come out to finally finish, derailing. And it's supposed to be key to continuity, but so much continuity has changed in the meantime. Everything's been derailed. This last issue was obviously like retrofit because it was so late. Boo. Oh man, Superman Year One. This, I got a ton of views on, a ton of reviews. John Romita Jr., the return of Frank Miller, coming and doing another year one, right? After Batman year one, maybe being the greatest Batman book of all time. Better than Dark Knight Returns, also by him. But like many believe Batman year one is to be the superior book. Um, I, I think that it's a completely different animal. But anyway, it, you know, it's the Alpha and the Omega of Batman by a master, Frank Miller. So any comparison to those works is, it, it better be good, Frankie, and this wasn't good. So John Romita Jr., first of all, I don't think was the greatest choice of the artist for this. I wasn't super excited because we see a lot of him. He's solid. He's very good. He's a classic guy. I didn't like the work on this extremely much. I didn't like the wide format black label for it, especially because his work isn't particularly detailed. Like, I would have much rather seen Doomsday Clock in this format because Gary Frank's artwork is so detailed. The thing is, it's not just bigger. They didn't just make a comic bigger because it's like the same height of a comic. It's wider. So it's a different aspect ratio. It's a different paper size that the artists actually have to draw on. So it's not um, just as simple as I'm printing it in a different way. It has to be drawn for this format. Could this format ultimately be the new floppy comic Maybe. I I I kinda I like it, but I kinda hope not. I love the glossy or the matte paper and the finish to it and the feel, the page count, the lack of ads, the production values are great, and, and actually the price point while it is high, when there's enough pages in it, there's value there and it feels like you're getting more, so I kinda like it. You need different size bags and boards and all that stuff. And to have these two different formats is weird. I want to see how these look in trade paperback format before I make my final judgment on this format, but I don't think this is going to be around forever. Anyway, worst. Heroes in Crisis. Oh, man. Let's... You want to really get some... some Destroy some, like, faith from your fans. Let's put Crisis, like, one of the most, like, fanboy-centric terms in DC Comics. Let's make put out a new Crisis. And let it... Let's make it just as inaccessible and kooky and stupid as possible. Tom King, I love you. I love your emotions, but I don't need 
I didn't need what was the six issues or ten issues or whatever it was of of superheroes in a reality show talking to the camera, making not great jokes and crying about stuff that just didn't it, and a story that made almost no sense to me. Changing characters like whatever Wally West, people complain about this. You can do what you want with the characters. This story just flat out stunk. Despite great artwork by Clay Mann, this just, the, I, I hated it. I hated every issue. I bought it begrudgingly. I wish I hadn't. I went out. I want to give it away. You want it? Talk to me. We can talk. Event Leviathan. Man, DC dominates the worst of limited series lists this year. And I think that's mostly because Marvel has a ton of limited series. They're just so bad that I didn't even bother reading them. So let's not... The comics that I try to read are those that take chances and have great artists and great creative teams. So even my the stuff on my worst of list in my mind is so is is far better than most of the stuff that was coming out from either of the big two certainly. So uh, anyway, Event Leviathan sprang out of the pages of Bendis Superman and Action Comics. Literally, what should have been one maybe oversized issue of Action Comics got spr- strung out into this this series this feels like editorial came in and took an idea and said oh man that sounds like great let's stretch it out into six months and put a great artist on it Alex Maleev but give him the absolute wrong material have a story that goes nowhere with an unsatisfying resolution that doesn't even resolve I knew coming in that the resolution would be bad because Bendis as I've always said it's endless Bendless Bendless endless Bendis hmm, endless Bendis he writes middles but not great endings almost ever. And in serialized comics and serialized fiction, that's probably good. That makes him a good writer. But man, was this unsatisfying to call it an event. Thumbs down. But the worst of them all, what was the worst of all these stinky ones? I mean, Doomsday Clock, Gary Frank artwork, so great, it elevated it. Frank Miller... Whatever you want to say, the format and the change and the the fact that it came out quickly and on time uh, and at least told a semi-coherent story and it's Frank Miller, it elevates it a little bit, though I hated it. Event Leviathan was far from an event, um, but man, nothing was worse than Heroes in Crisis. It was awful. I wouldn't recommend picking up even out of curiosity. The artwork is wasted on a story that's just that, that Clay Man is is a great, really great artist. I would love to see him on a good superhero book with something to say and 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 some action and something good. That's more than exploring the tortured mental depths of the Teen Titans. I don't. That's not why I read Teen Titans. Sorry. Okay, best original graphic novel. So not a collection. But original, something written as a single long work. Not a ton of these um, because it takes a long time to write one of these, right? When you write comics, you write a month at a time. Six months later, you got to trade paperback. So let's talk OGNs. Credo, the Rose Wilder Lane story by my favorite, all-time favorite cartoonist, Peter Bagg. I didn't review this on the show because I don't know why. I meant to, I want to, I will revisit it. I'm going to talk about it. He's done a whole line of sort of... Uh, uh, bio bio comics lately particularly he's he's bag is i loved bag before he got political at, in any way but now he write does comics for reason magazine as a libertarian i also have some libertarian le- leanings so i like that kind of stuff but this was the story of rose wilder lane and the story of uh creating little house on the prairie it was created by his mother her mother or was it really her Really an interesting story about an interesting lady told in an incredibly distinct and fun and funny and readable and engaging style. This is the kind of thing where if I was reading a book about this, I don't know if I would have finished it, but because it's Peter Bagg and because he's so great, um, I, I, I read it and enjoyed it and loved it. It's on my list. My heroes have always been junkies, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. This really felt like an oversized one-shot issue like of criminal that didn't have any lawless clan in it it was good though and i enjoyed it's not i bought it in this sort of hardcover format small storybook format good price again as an artifact brubaker understands and is making comics that feel good in your hand comics are made of paper digital comics stink 
I don't read them and I, I doubt I ever will. Um, but paper comics, by especially by someone who appreciates what it means and, and the difference in the types of paper stock and feel and binding and everything and how that affects you as a reader, that's something um, rare, but it's becoming more and more common in the graphic novel world, of course. Guts by Raina Telgemeier. She's a, it's a monster hit. Displaced Stephen King off the New York Times. A bestseller list. I read it and cried. My wife, who's a therapist, read it and loved it. My three-year-old daughter fell asleep looking and loving the pictures that she couldn't... She doesn't understand the story when she reads it by herself, but it just appeals to her in a way that's pulling her in. This is pulling in kids, millions of kids, and getting them into reading graphic novels and comic books. This had to be on the list. Rusty Brown. Now, this is this an original graphic novel? Mm, some of it is, so that's why it's on my list. It's it's a most of it's reprints of stuff that I've already read. There's a smattering of stuff that had never come out before. This is only volume one of two. It's a it's a masterpiece by an indie comics guy. When I put out this review, I said, "Man, this is for me because I really love Chris Ware. I've been a fan since I was young, uh, in high school, and." I said I'm gonna do it. I, I I know a lot of my fans maybe won't watch it, and a lot not a lot of you did. It didn't. It got some of my worst ratings early on, but man, over time, this has become one of my most watched videos because uh, Chip Kid, the famous book designer, uh, picked up on a review of it and uh, linked to it on his blog and a couple other places, and people have been watching it. I even sold a book from the link on Amazon. People have bought Rusty Brown. I'm making money off of it. I. I it just showed me that I need to follow my passion to talk about comics I love and care less about ratings and more about good comics and then the right people will watch like you people. So what was the best of these four? Four OGNs? What was the best? No contest. It was Guts by Raina Telgemeier. Sold the best. Broadest and widest audience. Made tons of money. Made tons of comics fans. It is, is uh, the latest work in a series by a master who now completely supports herself and has an audience measuring in millions, most of whom are young girls. This is comics. This is amazing. This is guts. Raina Telgemeier, you deserve best OGN. Okay, best collection of comics. Let's look at Mr. Miracle, another one from Tom King. Uh, I enjoyed... I, this was coming out in 2019, uh, part of 2018, I think, and I, I couldn't find the issues on the stands. I decided I'm going to wait for the trade. And I'm pretty glad I did because it read well as a trade. I, I thought the story was really fun and interesting and visceral. The artwork by Mitch Gerads fits in really well with the emotional storytelling of Tom King. This is one of those ones where, as opposed to Heroes in Crisis, the emotional tone really worked for me and fit i mean mr miracle spoiler alert there's some like really adult kind of stuff in here with uh dealing with suicide and dealing with um uh, mental health but then also uh, uh just a a cool look at apocalypse and um uh, the relationship between uh new genesis and apocalypse and dark side uh and mr miracle uh, it got a lot of praise. It was really great. I recommend checking it out. I, I totally enjoy it. That's why it's on the list. Kill or Be Killed. The deluxe edition, the omnibus came that collected all four of the Kill or Be Killed trade paperbacks. I didn't, again, I don't think I reviewed this on the show, but I always meant to. And I loved it so much. I got introduced to this by my store, the Scruffy Nerd Herder. I saw it there. I read the tra first trade paperbacks. I was instantly sucked in. If you haven't read Kill or Be Killed, Again, this is Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, the team that did Criminal and the, the other books that I talked about, going in a completely different direction. Supernatural, psychological, street crime, superhero-ish, vigilante-ish, um, psychological drama. This will, if it hasn't already been optioned, it should be optioned for a movie or a series like on Netflix, and this will be a monster hit if they make it right you want to pick up kill or be killed is 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 it in his mind is is there supernatural things at work or is it drugs i don't even want to say anything more but find this book and read it it was great get the individual trades or 
I, this is one where I would just say recommend even go buy the complete deluxe edition giant one because you won't be you you won't be sorry. Finally, ooh, Absolute Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, Volume One. Put this on my list. Uh, my I got this for Christmas from my brother Jack. Thank you so much, Jack. Wonderful gift. Um, even though I did tell you to get it for me, uh, I really appreciate it. It's got all new coloring on some of the best comics, uh, American comics Alan Moore ever wrote. Some of the early stuff. Uh, the, the transformation of Swamp Thing. It was like the original, the first time I had read where they, they did what I love, which is to completely retcon basically what Swamp Thing is, but completely embrace until we keep all the old stuff that came before and not disrespect it. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. It's expensive. It's a hundred bucks. It's really big and oversized. It's fuzzy like moss, like the Swamp Thing himself. And it's great. So, um, I, I, it's on my list, but what is the best? Kill or be killed, no doubt about it. Uh, again, it's always going to come down to the auteur for me, and uh, this was just a fantastic story. I don't hear a ton of people talking about it. I got to do a review of it. I would try try to do an in depth review, pull it into the million dollar comic scam because this is a comic unlike any or many others that I've read. It harkens to manga. A book like maybe this is like kick ass meets death note by way of taxi driver how about that those are that's high praise so uh you're gonna want to check that out for sure finally um best comeback let's talk about some of the oldies but goodies that made it back into comics uh in 2019 and there were more than this but one frank miller he did superman year one he did uh uh Batman Dark Knight Returns the Golden Child with Raphael Grandpa. He's mixing it up with classic artists, with new artists. He's trying new things to varying results, admittedly. But maybe he's just getting his feet back. You know, he went into the Hollywood realm and Ma, and they chewed him up and they spit him out. Uh, but now he's back in comics in a realm where he's a big fish in a small pond again. So let's see if he can keep that ego in check and put out another masterpiece. Uh, in his career they can't all be masterpieces right not all of his old stuff is masterpieces you don't believe me go read uh holy terror uh or 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 even uh dark knight 2 didn't love him but man sin city and 300 and so many things so many other things where he broke boundaries and dark knight returns and ronin and just changed everything frank miller's the greatest so uh, i'm always gonna love him you can put out bad comics as long as you want Another guy in that category, Neil Adams. Neil, you're one of the most important, you know, previous to Frank Miller, I'd say you're it. You're the modern, like, guy. Everybody wanted to draw like Neil Adams. Your storytelling chops as far as how you break down a page are amazing. Uh, your drawings are, are just great. Even at your advanced age, your comics still look great. But, man, you don't write great comics. Please, please, please just team up with one of the plethora of great art writers in comics or man even one of the not so great ones because um you're uh, kind of sullying some of the your, your your legacy a little bit because some of your best comics were working with great writers like denny o'neill right where the writing was top notch and it complemented your top notch artwork uh i'm sorry batman rasa ghoul and odyssey and stuff that is not it while the artwork is good I'm not loving it, uh, but I love you, and 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 I want to see you keep drawing comics. Finally, who's this guy? Bill Sienkiewicz. You know, Bill Sienkiewicz was a guy. He drew. He draws the abstract stuff, looking stuff, paint stuff, designy looking stuff. Uh, Electra lives again. New Mutants, Demon Bear Saga, stuff that as a kid I could not get into and couldn't grok. But as I've grown older and now as I'm an adult, I can look at that stuff and go, he was so far ahead of everybody that he was amazing um, and he's come back to do new work in 2019 if you've seen interviews with him this is like him in 2019 he is compare it to frank miller and how they he those two have aged uh um you know sinkevitz got had alcohol problems got clean and got sober and got healthy and looks it to this day and is sharp as attack and looks great frank miller something else happened um, 
Neil Adams actually for his age honestly looks better than Frank Miller. If you tell me who looks older in these pictures, it, uh, it, it ain't Neil. Neil's opening new comic book stores. He's opened comic book publishing companies. He's a great artist. Nothing can take away from him. But who get the best comeback of 2019 to me? It was Billy Sink. Uh, he did this New Mutants War Children book with Chris Claremont. I did a review of it. It's not a great comic. But the artwork, the chops are there. If you like Sinkevitz, like you can see, it's different, but he's matured. He hasn't lost anything. He's only gained in, in knowledge and, and power as an artist. And if you saw, I finally got to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And if you saw, if you didn't catch the influence of Bill Sinkevitz, particularly in the Kingpin stuff and the, the weird abstract way that they drew him, it just shows me that mainstream acceptance has totally come for the work of Bill Sienkiewicz. And that means that comics have totally accepted all of that stuff and all of those, um, the, the varying styles from the hyper-realistic of Neil Adams to the uh, abstract end of the spectrum like uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. And right in the middle probably maybe is Frank Miller who take took it and combined it with like the best storytelling of Will Eisner and of Japanese influences. Anyway, all of those comeback guys I have mad respect for. And there's many others probably that I didn't talk about. There's been older guys coming back into comics. We need the old guys. We need the young blood. We need the old guard. We need everybody working together. Um, that's why I've really loved watching stuff like uh, on TV or on YouTube, like, Comics Kayfabe, where they interviewed Bill Sienkiewicz. You should check out that interview. It's really good. Uh, and they talk about his work a lot. Um, so, guys, that's it for my 2019 wrap-up. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to thank you all for making 2019. This was the first year I got into YouTube. I've been doing it for about six months now. I'm at about halfway to my goal of a thousand subscribers. I want to see what can happen when you monetize a YouTube channel. You know, I just am interested in that side of it and taking that money and putting it back into production values on this show. I recently expanded the studio. I've got more room to move around and do more interesting stuff. Uh, I've been increasing the resolution and working on the Million Dollar Comics Cam. I've been trying to improve the sound and sound effects behind the scenes of this show, doing everything that I can. I'm going to keep doing that because, man, this is my passion, my fun, and my hobby is talking about comics and talking about them with you. So if you haven't already subscribed, please click that subscribe button. If you want to get notifications, click the bell. You can get like every video that I drop or you can get us once in a while. You don't have to watch everything. Not every topic that I talk about is for everybody. Um, but you're all invited. I want you all to come talk about comics. Leave a comment in the comments below. Let's make 2020 the best year ever for just you and your life. Um, but uh, you and your comic book loving, reading, and appreciating life. Let's make uh, comics viable and important again in 2020. I, with your help, I know we're going to do it. We got Raina Telgemeier bringing up the next generation. We got Frank Miller anchoring the older generation and we've got everybody in between the industry talk about the industry and the business of comics all you want the medium and of comics has never been stronger 2020 we're, we're going to see new artists and new people influenced by all of these artists and they're going to create the greatest comics that we have never seen in the not too distant future maybe it'll be my kids maybe it'll be your kids but man i can't wait to read them and i can't wait to talk about them so Thanks for talking about comics in 2020 and 2019, and we'll see you next time.